Yo what's going on guys Tanmay of our simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on game theory in operations research So in this video tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the matrix method and we're going to be using it to solve a mixed game situation So in the previous couple of videos we've seen the dominance method we've seen the algebraic method we've seen the maximin method and if you have missed any of those videos you can check out this entire playlist I'll drop the link of this playlist in the video description and you can also see a card but now let's start off with matrix method So whenever you get a game theory problem the first thing that you do is you generate the payoff matrix the next thing you do is you have to check for the saddle point right so you have to check whether it is a pure game that is a pure strategy or a mixed strategy so depending upon that you apply a particular method so if it is a pure strategy you know that maximin method will get you the proper saddle point and get you the value of the game as well and if there is no saddle point then you try to use the dominance method wherein you try to reduce the matrix to a shorter form to a simpler version so let's say you have a 4 cross 4 matrix then you use the dominance method to eliminate certain rows or eliminate certain columns and make it a shorter version and then apply some other methods which can be easily used to calculate the final answer right so even if step number 3 doesn't work then you can also directly use the matrix method so this is where we directly jump on to the step number 4 and use matrix method and what this method states that is we have a particular steps that we have to follow So you have to subtract each row from the row below it and write down the values below the matrix. Subtract each column from the column next to it and write down the values to the right of the matrix. Find oddments of individual strategies using determinants. Find probability of individual strategies and find the value of the game. Now all these five different steps obviously are not really clear until and unless you actually solve a numerical. And these steps are going to be applying to a three cross three matrix. So you can see we have our question which is given. So we have player A. who has a1 a2 and a3 strategy we have player b who has b1 b2 and b3 so let's start off the matrix method and let's see the step number 1 that is subtract each row from the row below it and write down the values below the matrix so essentially what we are doing is we are performing r1 minus r2 and r2 minus r3 so we are performing this entire r1 that is this a1 strategy minus a2 so 7 minus 9 1 minus minus 1 Seven minus one, and write down that in this row. We'll also be doing R two minus R three. That is nine minus five, minus one minus seven, and one minus six. And we write it over here. So let's do that first. So seven minus nine is minus two. One minus minus one is two. Seven minus one is six. Similarly, R two minus R three. So nine minus five is four. Minus one minus seven is minus eight. One minus six is minus five. So this was for the rows. Let's do this for the columns. So we have to do C one minus C two. So the strategy B one minus B two values. So seven minus one we have six. Nine minus minus one we have ten. Five minus seven we have minus two. We have C two minus C three. That is this B two column minus B three column. So one minus seven minus six. Minus one minus one we have minus two. Seven minus six we have one. Okay. So this was step number one and two that we just did. So I hope step number one and two are theoretically and practically clear now in the numerical. Now we have to find out the oddments of individual strategies using determinants. So because this is a three cross three matrix, we cannot directly find out the oddments like how we did in the odds method because that was a two cross two matrix. Here we have a three cross three thing. So the way we find oddments is by taking determinants. So you have to find oddments for individual strategies a one, a two, a three, b one, b two, and b three. So let's do that. So this is how you find oddments of individual strategies using determinants. So oddment for a1. So as I mentioned, we have to find out oddments for individual strategies. So when you are taking a1, so you are considering this row, right? So you have to eliminate the first row of this c1 minus c2 and c2 minus c3, and you have to take these four values. Okay? So you can see 10 minus 2 minus 2 and 1, and then you have to calculate the determinant by saying 10 into 1 minus Minus two into minus two, so basically this is something like ten into one minus minus two into minus two. So I hope you know how to calculate determinant, and this would give you the result of ten minus four. So we have ten into one ten minus minus two into minus two will give you four. So that's why ten minus four that is equal to six. And obviously it is inside this mod value, which means that we are not going to get negative values. We're going to exclude the negative values, and we get this first oddment of a one as six. So similarly, we have to find out the oddment of a two. So for a two, you can see we have to exclude this complete row. That is, we have to exclude this complete row, 
and you have to take six minus six minus two and one. So you can see six minus six minus two and one over here, and then calculate determinant. So this would be six minus twelve, ultimately giving you six. I hope you know how to calculate it. I'm not gonna waste time in calculations. Let's calculate oddment of A3 now. So for oddment A3, you can exclude this entire row that is the last row over here. So excluding minus two and one, you have to take these four values to calculate the determinant. So six minus six, ten and minus two. So six minus six, ten and minus two. Calculate the determinant and it will be forty-eight. So this was for player A that is strategy A1, A2, and A3. Now similarly, we have to do this for B1, B2, and B3 that is strategies of player B now. And you have to apply the same logic. So let me just show you all the oddments. So for oddment B1, what we did is we excluded this row. And we took two six minus eight and minus five. So you can see two six minus eight and minus five. We calculated the oddment using determinant, and we got thirty eight. Similarly for B two, we excluded this column. We took minus two six four and minus five. So that's what we have over here: minus two six four and minus five. We calculated the determinant, and we got fourteen. And I hope you know how to calculate determinant. You have to take so you have to multiply this. That is minus two into minus five minus. Six into four. So just showing it to you again. Minus two into minus five. The whole minus six into four. Okay. So that's why we got ten minus twenty four. And then since we have a mod sign, even though the answer is negative over here, you can see ten minus twenty four is minus fourteen. But because of the mod sign, we have to exclude that negative sign and just write down fourteen. So I hope this is very clear. Similarly, for the last. B3 strategy. We just exclude this column because we are calculating for B3. So we take minus two, two, four, and minus eight. So minus two, two, four, and minus eight. Calculate the determinant, and we get eight. Okay. So we've calculated all the individual oddments, and now we are actually reaching the final answer. So let's conclude this. So now we have to redraw the matrix, and what we have to do is we have to write down individual oddments besides every strategy. So for A1, we know we have six. So I'm going to write six over here. For A two we have six. For A three we have forty eight. Similarly, for B one we have thirty eight. For B two we have fourteen, and for B three we have eight. Ultimately, if you take a total thirty eight plus fourteen plus eight, or six plus six plus forty eight, it is gonna give you sixty in both the cases, because that's how oddments work. And we have basically found out our final answer over here itself, because now we have the individual probabilities of each strategies. So probability of A one is gonna be oddment of A one that is six divided by this total that is six plus six plus forty eight which is sixty. So this is gonna be one by ten. Similarly, P of A two is gonna be again six divided by sixty that is oddment of A two which is six upon the total that is sixty, which is again one by ten. And lastly, probability of A three is gonna be forty eight upon sixty. You can reduce it or keep it as it is. So these are the individual probabilities of player A using strategy A one, A two, and A three. So these are the optimum probabilities in which the player A should use strategy A one, A two, and A three. Similarly, like this, we have to find out for player B. So I'm just gonna write it quickly. Okay. So optimum strategy for A is one by ten, one by ten, four by five. So those were the individual probabilities. That is P of A one, P of A two, and P of A three. Okay, so similarly, I have calculated optimum strategy for B. So this is B one, B two, and B three, and these are all probabilities. Okay, so just for understanding, if you want probability of B one, would be the oddment of B one, which is thirty eight, divided by this total that is thirty eight plus fourteen plus eight, which is sixty, right? And this would give you nineteen upon thirty, because two nineteens are and two thirties are. So that's why I have reduced it, and you can see the output over here. Similarly, you can calculate B two and B three. And one last thing that I want to talk about is how did I get this value of the game thing? So, the value of the game is given by four different ways in which you can calculate it. What I've done is I've taken the first row, that is seven one seven. I've taken seven into thirty eight, so you can see seven into thirty eight plus one into fourteen plus seven into eight. So basically, what I did is I took the first row and I took the column oddments. I took a multiplication between each of these values and took a addition in between and divided it by sixty. That is the total of the oddments. Similarly, you can take the second row and do the same thing. You can take the third row and multiply it by these column oddments. Okay. 
and you can also do the same thing with taking the one column you can take this entire column 795 and multiply it with the row augments so you can do 7 into 6 plus 9 into 6 plus 5 into 48 and you'll get the same when you divide it by 60 okay and the value of the game is given by 336 divided by 60 so this is basically the final answer of the value of the game you can divide it further if you want but you can keep it as it is also so yeah this was the matrix method and it does seem a little bit lengthy but then you just simply have to find out r1 minus r2 and r2 minus r3 and then you have to find out c1 minus c2 and c2 minus c3 and then you just have to find out individual augments and once you do that you have basically reached your final answer just write down the augments beside the matrix and calculate the individual probabilities and you get the optimum strategies and lastly you get the value of the game by the formula that i just mentioned so yeah that's it for this video guys this was the matrix method when you have a 3 cross 3 matrix hope you guys understood this problem if you like this please give it a thumbs up do share it with your friends let me know in the comments how this video was and thanks for watching see you guys in the next video peace